say anything about the Jews. Fuck. <laughs> Not seeing it. That was Shamoy that said that. <clears throat> okay, so uh, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> so no one knows anything because we have the, the the splash picture still up there. Okay. So okay, um, good, yeah. Good. So as long as I no as long as I hit this fucking button right, um, transition there maybe. There we Ooh, go. I think that. that now that that shows us on the thing. So uh, what's up, everybody? This is what's popping. It is um, April 14th, 2024. It's me, Max, uh, DYT, Beamer the ET, and Shamar. Um, so, what do we want to talk about? What do we want to do? So, go ahead, Beamer. Was, go ahead. Was, Beamer wondering, usually has lots to talk about. Yeah, man. Uh, well, I have a lot of stuff that I want to talk about, like, because I have a lot of stuff coming up. But, uh, Max, I was wondering... Which format we want to do? Dude, is is Shamar one of the boys today, or is Shamar gonna? Uh, I guess we can leave it up to Shamar. How you I'm gonna run it? Order. You want like a you want you want to give like a short background type thing, and we can just evolve into some pop culture. It's what's popping cool. with Butler Hip Hop. So um, right now, you're what's popping, bro. Short story, you know. I'm Shamar. I'm an artist in the city. Uh, I've been making music since I was seven years old. Uh, I recently dropped an album called Overcast Thoughts. Uh, I'm the A&R of a club called uh, Rock Two More in a Social Club in uh, Hayes, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Um, we're closing April 27th. Uh, I got easily 300 shows under my belt. Uh, <laughs> uh, Big showrunner. Hosted. Uh, it was great. You know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, um, what, do you, what do you think? What do you think? I know we talked about it a little bit of just, you know, on a fly, but what do you think that void of not... Because Rock Till Morning, like you said, is going to be shutting down on the 27th, so there's going to be a, a void. If anybody knows about Rock Till Morning, you know that it's a huge cultural staple, at least to me and, and the guys up here in Butler. It's a cultural staple of, like, where we like to go uh, a couple times a month for, for music. What do you think is going to be the club or the venue that fills that void? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, right now, it's up in the air. Honestly, um, I'm curious to see who does. Yeah. Yeah. It, right. it, Do you think it, it could be somebody completely new? It, this yeah. It could be scene? someone because when when we came past, no one knew who the fuck we were. Mm-hmm. Like when we started out, no one knew who the fuck Rock Till Morning was. Yeah. When 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 I said Rock Till Morning, they're like, where? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two seven one Baldwin. You're in Baldwin. No, we're not in Baldwin. We're in Hayes. Well, where the fuck is that? <laughs> Right, right, we're, right. we're over here in the cut by Sandcastle in the back, and but now we're at the point to where when I say Rock to Morning, people know where the fuck I'm talking about. It rings bells, like, yeah. it, and that's that's like that's our legacy shit. You know what I mean? Like people, like I, I was, uh, I was looking at memories from shows from what almost probably three three years ago. Yeah, about, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, the Fall yes. Classic and this and that with Eastside Cartier. Yes. So, um. I'll look at, I'll tell stories from nights from there, probably for the rest of my life. I, you know, Bro, so it's that legacy thing. We had moments. We yeah. had, we had moments. We, we, we had great moments. I've seen so many artists come through and go, like you, yeah. you're, you're one of them. Like, like, like the Beamer, the ET that I've seen at the Versus Battle is a completely different Beamer, the ET that I met. Yeah. That motherfucker's crazy. Uh, it, 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 not to say that Beamer, the ET that I met, what there wasn't anything wrong with it, but but your evolution watching it, Coming. watching it happen, crazy. Yeah, and I'll it tell you what it is, amazing. I, it's, it's all right. So we started we started with Butler Hip Hop. We've always been doing Butler Hip Hop, right? I've always been doing shows with Butler Hip Hop, and then uh, Butler Hip Hop through doing shows there and had gaining the confidence, the stage presence, and this and that. Bro, I, whenever I first came to Rock Till Morning, scared to death, scared to death. You know what I mean? Because it's. It's a big transition to uh, your, it's not just like the biggest close city, but it's like the biggest city. I could go, I could go hour, any direction. It's still going to be the biggest city. So like, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and then like, I take that to say this, like Rock Till Morning, then did that to the point where like Max and I, I went and did a show in Cleveland. Do you know what I mean? We're talking about doing shows fucking North Carolina that's gonna be like the next the next jump so um yeah 
yeah, yeah, these things are, these things are staples, there's different staples, and, like, I would imagine that it's not just me, you know what I mean, so we, like, we have a lot of artists that, like, their next big move is, like, the next place that, like, shows love, and, like, yeah. that's the one thing that I can say about Rock Till Morning through and through, they've always showed love. That's her thing, like, not to say we didn't give a fuck what you did on the stage, but you were open to go up there and do anything, yeah. we, we, we had somebody's mom up there <laughs> like literally she went up there and performed her song she she sang like 90s r&b her yeah, song's I like a modern I was, rapper i was there for that yeah she was, it, yeah. It, yeah she is she the one that fell off the stage yeah because she <laughs> was in the corner selling drinks yeah. yeah yeah uh yeah she was just doing her song and then i don't remember why she fell off but i what? i have it i have a video of it <laughs> yeah because that's what i do i always go and just record yeah it's my thing man so, it, 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 shit she, like that. it wasn't she didn't fall because she's too messed up it was like she just took a step just yeah, took a step, step in the wrong direction yeah. yeah and that's crazy uh like those are the things like especially when you're brand new when you're brand, brand new like so what are the things what are you worried about what's the what's the embarrassment what are the nerves for you don't want to go up there and what you don't want to go up there and forget your lyrics right I guess the bottom line, I can cut everything off. You don't want to go up there and look stupid. That's the that's that's the one thing. You're you're being vulnerable. You're in front of people. A lot of the times, it's a song that you wrote. Like, there's not a lot of people I see doing covers besides like Malik. But like, even that dude, he is singing. Like, there's, right. it's, it's so different. Right. So uh, that 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 to me is like the bottom line. The bottom line that stops that separates people who go to the studio and post on SoundCloud and then put it on Apple Music and this and that. From the people who also do that and then move to the next step, I would see is performing. You know what I mean? It's it's the I don't want to go up there and look stupid, so let me just record them and put them. Out. I'm not a performer, which nothing against people like that, but like me personally, I love the performance and and I love the performance now. I almost pulled out of the live event, so so scared, so what? nervous, bro. bro I, I was got, nervous. I got, I got a lot of fucking people to come down and like uh, it was the first time that I was like, please. Buy, like buy, buy my tickets yeah. you know what I mean so it was like I think um, that gave you the jump start that you needed to uh, I mean even Ryan went yeah so yeah I, I we think pictures I think I have a picture out. About, okay. you get the Sasquatch out yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you, you kind of need that fire yeah. like like, yeah. like that, that. that's one thing that Rail taught me like you have to get pushed outside of your comfort yeah. zone to grow yeah. because the next time won't be as hard yeah and then like taking that alright so like I'm pushed out of my comfort zone so here right and I do it I make the the first leap's gonna be the biggest leap. The mm -hmm. first leap's always gonna be the biggest leap. The first time you ever step outside of it. Then the next one, depending on what the opportunity is or this and that, shouldn't be as hard because you did it once and then now you have the confidence behind you to say, all right, let me try it again because that first one worked out. It, it, it won't be until the next one that's like a big enough leap that you're even nervous again. Well, you'll probably still be nervous. Right. But like questioning it, you know what I mean? And that live event was the first time that... Um, but I had to like sell myself because all the other times, like a show, it, when it's a showcase, and like anybody can sign up, it's not. It's like it'd be like, "Hey, I'm performing," but like so we're so we're like 15 other people too. See, so like, but I really feel like that was our difference when Rock Two Morning because a lot of people, like I feel like that word showcase gets tossed around too much. Like on honestly, a lot of people throw open mics and they put yeah. your name on the flag. Like, yeah. cause literally, yeah. They, yeah. like literally, not to be funny, a lot of people do the same thing that I do with jam session, but they give you a flag. Let's let's break down what the hell the difference is, cause I, mm. to me, they're they're all the same. I don't know the fucking difference. Nah, but, but nah. uh So sh you got to showcase a jam session. Nah. And see, what else? jam session. I, I feel mic. like jam session is for honestly, it's a funny name for an open mic. Jam session is our open open mic series. Okay. Like, I feel like an open mic is literally an open mic. Literally, it's open to anyone. So we say, hey, who wants to perform? And whoever says, hey, I want to come perform, you can come perform. Mm -hmm. It's an open calling. I feel like a, a showcase is a curated show. Like, we sat oh, down okay. and we thought about the lineup. Like, okay, so I think artists one, two, three, and four make sense. Okay. And, and in that order. In that yeah, order. In, in, in that yeah. order. Yep. yep. And, and we're, 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 we're going to cap it at five artists. And, and instead of having open to it, however many artists sign up, so that's what right, right. that's what DJ Chevy's doing right now. He's so, doing, he's rocking yeah, showcases, curated, yes. curated showcases. So you think yes. I, I, whenever I think of a showcase in art, wherever that art show is showcasing that stuff, they probably pick those artists, and even to the point where they pick those pieces of art from yes. those artists to 
then showcase. <clears throat> Whether yes. it be like showcase, like I think of it like you put it in glass, you put the put the thing around it, boom, like you're this word, we're gonna hype this thing up or give the artist an opportunity to put their thing on the platform. So that makes sense. That's like that's a good breakdown. That's a good breakdown. So <clears throat> Damn, we got it. So, yeah. so I, I like the I like the yeah. description of like it being in order too. Um, I think that might maybe where the lines get blurred. Um, That's exactly when, where it gets blurred. When uh, okay, so and you would have to you would have to have, be familiar with every artist that is joining your showcase yeah. and yes. to then curate. You know, like putting. Uh, Putting like Ray Lee and uh, putting like C D Young in with like next to like, somebody that would uh, contrast him. You know what I mean? Somebody more hype, say like Squeezy. You know what I mean? Like, so we have C D Young in who's gonna mellow you out, but also it's hard shit and he's talking real shit. And then we'll go to Squeezy who's like damn there on some like King Von shit where it's gonna be like it's hype, it's real, it's aggressive. And so we'll go back and forth and it shifts the energy, bring you up, bring yeah. you down, and that's how you curate a good show. Yeah. <sighs> I could do it. We could do it. Let's do it. Let's yeah, do. Let's, that, that, I feel like so, that's a. Hold on, go ahead. Go ahead. That that's a showcase. Yeah. Like like like. You you can bring it up because like that's that's the thing about curating a showcase. You can con control the show however you want to do it. You can start high, bring it down. Start low, bring it up. Mm -hmm. You can go up, down, up, down. You can go this way and then completely go less with a surprise performer. And like we 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 we've done it all at Rock to Morning, and, and I've I've seen it all happen, and and they all work as long as you do it correctly. Yeah. Like, you guys have been to, like, RTM Live, we had, what, seven artists? Yeah. How many motherfuckers in that room now? A lot. That's a curated show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, the order uh, uh, the order of how people are going, like, you already know. Like, I don't have to show up and be like, all right, I don't have to come visit you Dude. nine times. Like, when am I going? When am I going? Dude. When am I going? I just, I know I'm right after X, or I'm right after Real Z, the genius. You know what I mean? I need support from through. Dude. I'm actually I'm first, he's second, but that's a whole different. We'll talk about that later. Hey, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> oh shit! No, nah, but that's a good breakdown. So, um, you said you started music when you were seven. What got you in? What got you mm. into music? My older cousin. Uh, he's five years older than me. He started rapping, and once I seen him start rapping, I tried to start rapping. Like, my, my, my early renditions of my music were fucking terrible. We were actually in a group called uh, The Young Gentleman. We uh, started recording on cassette tapes in my grandma's basement on a karaoke machine. Straight up, like, like how, like, motherfuckers... Real mixtape. Yeah, it's a like, real fucking mixtape. Yeah, <laughs> we made real mixtapes. We went to uh, fucking... What was that shit called? It, I think it was Dollar Tree. You know, you got, like, a five-pack of tapes for a dollar, pop them bitches in there, and that's how we recorded, like, our original music. And I was seven fucking years old. And, 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 so that. I actually have tapes um, of me doing like voiceovers. I think they're they're, they're in my attic, um, not this part of the attic. Yeah, it was like we're in here. Another, attic. yeah. There's another <laughs> attic above the garage, um, but I have these tapes, um, just acting weird, bro. Just yeah. Acting fucking yeah, goofy. Yeah, yeah. But yes, yeah. I understand exactly what, yeah. what can be what is possible with a cassette tape. Yeah. Super fun, having fun, didn't take it serious yet, bro. Nah. That's probably the best. Bro, just some of the, the best times, some of the wildest shit yeah. I've said, <laughs> but it, it, it definitely <laughs> helped shape me to where I am now. I feel like, I f not to say like I feel like I'm where I am now, because but like I figured it out. I definitely have my ten thousand hours in. I've been doing, I'm turning thirty this year. <laughs> like I've been doing this shit since I was seven years old. I've been doing it longer than half of the artists I've seen at the jam session have been fucking alive. Right, <laughs> right, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. right. Did you uh, what's up, AARP? Have you? Yeah, no. Nah. You qualify for it. Bro, so I'm literally I'm a year older than you. <laughs> I'm, I'm you you, to you got 95 tagged on you? I'm 94. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not too far from you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to put me on blast, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my, girl, my girl's literally 32 years old. I tell Damn. her. She Let's, was born in 1969. <laughs> <laughs> I tell her all the time. I don't, Ryan, did we ever ask you what got you into music? Oh, yeah. Psy guy. You don't know sign. Psy guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is Psy guy. guy. Yeah. <laughs> Take him a minute. This is Psy guy. Depression yeah. got me in the music. Yeah. Depression, such a fucking no, downer. That's real yeah. though. If, it, even it, if it, it is, is. <laughs> even if it is, because um, like my answer to that question was like, uh, it, it just made it like made me feel something, something new. You know what I mean? You can make you feel something else, or like hone in on the feeling that you're feeling, so you can feel it and get out of it. You know what I mean? So that's a valid answer if it, if that's the answer. 
Did whenever it? the art center was first doing the rap shows, and I was there, um, like running security for the night, me and a couple of old friends, for a couple of artists that were coming out of Pittsburgh, and it guess kind of intrigued something in me to like want to perform live and I really never got in the rap until like that night like I never felt it as a form of expression I really didn't get into a whole heck of a lot and then I started listening to the lyrics and feeling the music as I got older and then um, after my first breakup with my first girlfriend um, that's kind of whenever I dove in and trying to like find a way to express myself through words I may or may not have said mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there's so much shit I have <clears throat> written put away from like since i was 18 until now yeah. so about a little over 10 years and i can only imagine like what i wrote what i like was feeling back then and how i evolved from then to now i'm clueless mm -hmm. i just i like to hop in and just freestyle anymore the last time yeah. i actually recorded and put a song out has been almost five years right. after uh, <clears throat> after losing my uh, younger brother yeah. so that that kind of Worth my little reality and someone did a lot on me but still trying to yeah make, how, it, make it make it day by day how how have you how, how have you and if you if you haven't that's also an answer too but how have you like have you done anything specifically to try to deal with that Wri writing is like a, a good way of doing it but anything outside of that writing exercise just trying to keep myself as busy as possible yeah, absolutely Taking absolutely. care of my family, you know, his yeah. his kids and my yeah, mom. Absolutely, I ask that because I know uh, I've a, I've a a warped perspective perspective on life and death. You know what I mean? I'm super spiritual. I, I lost my uncle recently, and uh, I hear that. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And, and and I'll tell you why. Because he had things going on. You know what I mean? He was not comfortable in his day to day. Every day I wake up, and I'm so blessed that I'm healthy. So I know that every single day if I wake up and I thank God for being healthy, I know what it would, it can look like if you wake up and you're not healthy and it can take a toll on you mentally, spiritually, physical, physically and all that. So um, I just ask that because I know um, I have a friend just lost his grandfather and you hear it all the time. And I think it's really important to be able to either be a person for someone that just lost somebody, be able to um, just be there for them. Because like, People, people don't know how to deal with uncomfortable feelings. You know what I mean? So the better that people deal with being with other people while they're feeling feelings that are uncomfortable, the better we'll get it. It's a community, community aspect of it because everybody always says when somebody, reach out, reach out and talk to somebody. But, like, I'm going to hold you, man. Some people, some people act like they don't want to hear it, and it may not be that they don't want to hear it, but, like, they don't know what to say. Yeah. You know? Sometimes not, <clears throat> you don't even fucking have to. Just be here. Yeah, but um, I know I've seen it all too often that somebody's going through something and they fucking get are like pushed away by people. Come back, come back when you feel better, and that's not like a true friend. Nope. That's not a true friend group. So that's why I asked. I gotta hit my inhaler real quick. Yo, keep going. Oh. I can't breathe. <laughs> You get it? What's poppin' will take your breath away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crazy. Albuter, all boys. Yeah, on, on God. Yeah. <laughs> hey. nope. How no. beautiful are boys? You no, know it really takes my breath away. Asthma, damn it. Uh, hey, the, uh, I'm one of the beautiful boys. I know all about it. Really <laughs> Dropping some hot, spicy tracks takes you your breath the, away. You know, but, all right. Literally yelling into my ears. To be completely honest, um, music is like a great, great, great expression. Um, it's honestly my purest means of expression. Like I, I say things in my songs that I'd never say to anyone. Like. Um, my album, Overcast Thoughts, like, crazy thing about it, like, it's li literally about me fighting a, um, bout of depression. Like, e each song is, like, like, a different clout. Um, the song, Overcast It, that I dropped before the album is, like, a, a, a precursor. So, like, Overcast It, like, I, 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 I rap about being schizophrenic, but on Overcast Thoughts, like, each song has a different tone. Okay. So, it's, like, a different personality. Or a, a different cloud in the sky, and, and, and that's the, the the wildest thing about my album. It, it's literally about that. If, if if you actually listen to it and then you get it, you go, oh shit, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, shit, yeah. that's what the fuck it's about. Because Warhol wraps it all up. Warhol just like he just the um. I know I tried to find your. This is your newest album that you just released. What? 
when did you release it? Platforms? Uh, who? What did it get? Yeah, I, I dropped that 2021. Oh, 2021. I, yeah. I was thinking that, I know you just released yeah. an album now. Yeah, that was that one. 2021, that's that one? Okay. Yeah. Um, Fuck. I'm sitting on like 30 songs. I'm about to start flooding motherfuckers out. You're going to, uh, so you, you have the potential with 30 songs. You have the potential for two five song EPs. One, seven, one Drake seven CD. singles yeah, nah. a C- yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are you gonna do because we live in the era of singles Sports right now four, five, attention six, spans eight, you know what I mean I shot myself in the foot putting out a concept album it's coming out on nah, April 26th but you, you just have to uh, promote it to the, to the right, right people yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. get the concept hey, everybody's looking for something you know what I'm saying um, and, and speaking but, on that real quick sorry to jump in but it's like uh, how you guys were saying uh, about the past of depression and schizophrenia and stuff like that <laughs> One thing that uh, what is pretty crazy uh, about music is uh, uh, you could be feeling sad. The sad song could be on, and then you could put on like a happy song, like a little too poppy, you know. Yeah. And then now mm-hmm. it's like you're you're like almost manic. You're up, up, yeah. and then it's like you can put on something just just dog shit, and now you're like just there yeah. once again. But it's like every it, it, it's like every three yeah. minutes your yeah. moods are changing, just like what you're saying. The schizophrenia, yeah. it's like. It, it, yeah, 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 I yeah. get it with the song idea. Okay, that and it, it's that that uh the underlying tone of like just I I would put that in like a like a mental health awareness type th- like type not box but you yeah. know what I mean like uh even if it's not hey make sure you focus on it, it's you're promoting like hey these these things are real they're true yeah. they affect you this and that and like here's here's my perception on how they have or how they yeah. can you know yeah. what I mean. Which is so important. I, I think we're doing a good job as a culture um, with making sure, because like, uh, like we've we've lost people in the group. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm sure we all lost people in our lives. But like, if you get, if you can get somebody to what is, what is music music, yeah. what's um what is it Mims? Music? Wait, what's up? Um, what's uh what's Mims? This is this is why I'm hot. hot. This is why I'm isn't hot. Mims an acronym for? Music it's not music. Not, sa- music is what my story. Say, it's a story. Okay. Music is my savior. Savior. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's crazy because this is why I'm hot. It's not even like no deep shit. But like yeah. at the same time, like sometimes niggas don't need deep shit. Like they just bro. something. To, you know, man, going out and hanging out with my <clears> bros and listening to like a bangers all night is like therapy to me. That's what I need, bro. I don't need to always divulge into yeah. this and that because I be thinking about it. Give me, give me that on a car, car ride. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I, I think about it, I'll figure well, it out, and then I'll get there. That's what, well, there's different music for every place. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I feel like that's what you should have as an artist. Like, you, you, you should have the versatility. Yeah. You should be able to make, like, I, I got some music for the car, I got some music for the club, I got some music for the shorties, mm-hmm. I, 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 I got some music, you can play around kids. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. I, I got some, like, like, like some not, it's, it, it's, it's, Commercial, yeah. So yep. not to say, not even shit. She can play around kids. She can play around everybody. Shit that can be played in like Sheets or Walmart. Yes. You know what I mean? That I mean that should be. If you are interested in having like a lucrative business in your music, bro, you should absolutely have shit that's like on the popular side of things. That's feel good. Like I literally, I'll make a song Katy Perry should sing. I will. You know what I mean? And and like I. I, I just understand like the business side of things, man. Like it, it, people are asking me. All right, so people have asked me for um, like clean versions of my music, yeah. of of songs that aren't clean. Yeah. And no, I'm not. I'm because like the Albert that's that song is supposed to be like that. <laughs> you can, but I will make ten songs with no explicit material that are clean. So if you that's what you want from me, like here you go. I I have them already. You know what I mean? I feel what you're saying. But what if you not you edit them, yeah. you restructure them? Oh, say something different. Yeah. Take this out and do that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So uh, because you're, you're you're still missing out on the demographic. Yeah, by doing that. with that song. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, not be funny. Like like yeah. say say they want the clean version of um, Champagne Nostalgia. Mm. It is clean, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. It, yeah. But. That's what they want. Yeah, they, they yeah, don't want yeah, the clean version yeah. of Liddy. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Liddy don't go like clean very well. Yeah. That's like asking someone to, uh, to like, be like doing a clean kid. version of Kim. You can't yeah. do a clean version of Kim. Kim. 
Uh, it'd be like, yo, let me hear the kids' bop version at nine. You know what I mean? Dude. Gumma. You know what I mean? How how are you supposed to do that? You know what I mean? Man. But uh, but 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 you were talking about you were talking about uh just having like diversity in your music. I think I think that's so the biggest. And I'm 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 gonna plug I'm gonna plug real quick because we're getting close we're getting close to the drop guys. Uh, no rain no flowers. So like you've heard just about every song off of Beamer the ET the LP right. So uh, moving into No Rain No Flowers, right? I dropped Beam of the ET, the LP, and it's all that. Well, it, I didn't curate an album, bro. It was a collection of songs that I made to, because I wanted my sets to be lit and this and that. And then like I had like eleven songs, like nine of them were unreleased. So I just put them all together and like here's a collective of a couple of songs that I made over the last year, right? right. No Rain No Flowers. Every single song has been written within the last four months. Right. Um, it was curated as a concept album. No rain, no flowers. It's a journey through making sure that we're not we're not playing the victim mentality and, and the victim of the circumstances that we've been through. We have grown, we have grown, we have lived, we have learned, and this is my perspective based off the experiences that I went through. And my perspective is not one of like, poor me, pity me. Right. It's not like, but like absolutely like, here. I right. I went through some shit. I know everybody goes through shit. If I can get through the shit that I go through, you can get through the shit that you go through too. Because no two people's problems are any bigger or smaller bro it's just right. the way that you get through them if, if if me and one person say uh say we say uh, death you know what i mean depends how you look at it you know what i mean um but t two people can go through the same thing and it'd be traumatic to this one and it'd just be like part of the character development part of the story and, and all of that because like this person may have dealt with it a different way and this person dealt with it a different way so like <clears throat> no rain of flowers i got this songs where i only sing I got songs where I rap, sing. I got I got a commercial. It was a Valentine's Day song. Mm -hmm. the, no swear words, no explicit material. I accidentally made f like four or five tracks. Accidentally, uh, completely clean. Like just because of the the content of the things that I was writing about, moving and making this concept album, <laughs> weren't they just didn't call for it. Right. I still got the bangers too. I got a song with right. Ronnie Bando on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, Ma Max. Four twenty two is fucking. Yeah. Dude. I'm sure that's yes. nutty. Yeah, it, it, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, I'm sure that's nutty. Who else do I got a song? <laughs> so, uh, world, Worldwide, the first single off the album. Right. Uh, I think it's sitting pretty at like 8.6K. That's pretty week. cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. I could never have a song like yeah. that because I don't make songs. Uh, well, I, I try you could. and they get stuck at that first <clears throat> It's a <laughs> It's a community <laughs> aspect of it, man. So, so, I don't have a single, the entire beam of the... ETLP didn't right. do that. You know what I mean? The right. entire one, and that's been out for a minute now. Uh, but now, like I told you on the way here, uh, throughout the weekend, I may have 20 orders at my house. You know what I mean? Uh, were all the kids outside when you pulled up? No, probably no. not. It was started in the rain. So, right before you pulled up, right. there were about 15, you know, age 10 to like 14 year old kids just in my neighborhood. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? Like, just it's a community aspect. I just be fucking with people and. It, the moving of genuine organic connectivity has just been working. Podcasts, I go on a couple of other podcasts. I got a, a podcast, Emotional Nightmares, next weekend. It's literally a mental health podcast. has nothing to do with music, you know what I mean, which will be great. Um, but I'm doing all the like, stuff. I see if uh, if I'm promoting a stand-up comedy special, bro, I'm a comedian, bro. I'm going to go on a media run everybody's podcast make sure that people know that you know hey i'm funny i can be entertaining you got likable so like i don't fucking watch my special yeah, like who, you know who are the big podcasts <laughs> of like uh, of uh in the music industry here in, in pittsburgh, in pittsburgh. You have like uh the give, uh giving away gme <clears throat> for, uh, giving away game, game. yeah yeah, yeah. Who's, is that lisa lee and blizzo is that who runs that i don't know i think i, know, I, think, I know of them and there's like one other group that does so, stuff. Uh, Nightfall. Well, it's the one that they share. They share the podcast place. <clears throat> oh, 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 um, oh, 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 bunch of bull studios. Is that is it with two two three Marley? Marley. Yeah, Marley. <laughs> yeah. And they run. Podcast. I think they run. They have their bunch of bull has like like five different channels. One's like a, a weed review. One's pop culture. One's strictly for interviews like they got all these different i think they got like a skateboarding yeah. side of things so like <clears throat> that, that's cool because they have like a, it's a studio right they have all the equipment it's always set up okay we're gonna like rotate different hosts about different topics so like here we have this platform we have to 
we'll we'll go through a lot of different topics, right? But like, uh, if if we had the space and the different people that were committed enough to showing up and this and that, like, okay, so this one <clears throat> Sunday could be just interviews and just music, and then um, Tuesday at at two or whenever everyone's free, it could be. Um, pop culture, conspiracy stuff, it could be that, and then the next one could be whatever, promotion of any, but whatever, so, but, uh, I think they have an awesome platform over there, a bunch of bull, yeah. but I know, uh, who else, Nightfall is doing podcasts, and they have a cool little thing, uh, CD Youngin just did their podcast, and it was great quality, uh, I'm, I would imagine they have good production, because they also have a, like a, like a headquarters, you know what I mean, which, Max is working on right now. Yeah, I'm trying get, to get that. Getting together <clears throat> of Butler Hip Hop where, where, where that logo is like in the window. You know what I mean? It's just ours. Kind of like, kind of like uh, Rock Them Water. I mean, plus yeah. For Butler. Yeah, it'd be nice to fucking have our headquarters so I don't have to lug around that equipment anymore. <clears throat> and then we can just have our ciphers have this there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's nice to be able to have a place, a spot to be able to build to build that we can actually like construct something out of nothing um luckily you know this space in the attic is now available so um now all we have to do is like get more equipment yeah. you know yeah so try and figure out trying to figure out exactly like you said who who we know that can is going to come over be consistent and do this shit yeah. is uh, is a main thing um, cause I, I always, I'm always just whatever. I, I don't give a fuck. I'll do whatever the fuck. Yeah. I, I don't have anything really going on. So I know we're going to have a kid and stuff, but, uh, like I've already, I've already had a kid. So I'm not like, I don't know, man. I'm just like going through it, you know, <clears throat> living it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Ryan. One day at a time. <laughs> feel... One breath at a time. That's all we can do, bro. The, um, watch your step. Yeah. Yeah, watch your step. Yep. Mm -hmm. sure Any other, uh, put on the right uh, shoes on the right foot. <laughs> Any other genres you're in for this in besides hip hop? Yeah, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> Crazy thing. You probably won't believe it. I listen to R and B more than I listen to rap music, bro. Yeah. Like yeah. In, in, in my personal time. Mm. I really listen to R and B. Like I try to keep my mind calm mm. these days. Um, so I try to listen to a lot less hip hop because the kind of hip hop that I like it's similar to the kind of hip-hop that I make, mm -hmm. and it gets my mind in that kind of mode. Mm -hmm. and, and so I got it. Oh, stop. Oh, absolutely. You, you know, I like, uh, I like calm shit, bro. Like, I like jazz music. I like, like, smooth rock. Blues like, and shit. Okay. Like, 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 I like. What about, like, like, like classic rock? Would you would you say or like, like Creed? Like, you like Creed, no. bro? If you like Creed, like, bro, you can say that. I like smooth shit, bro. <laughs> like, like, like the fray. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the fray. I found God at the corner of his hand. Everyone knows I'm in my head. Yup, smash it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's respectable. I'm <laughs> I'm <laughs> can't say I've ever listened to that. Um. All I all I did for a lot of years, for ten years, was just only download rap. So I, I'm, a, I'm I'm a music pirate. I'm a music pirate. It's either that or like metalcore. Yeah. So it's either like Census Fail or or rap. But um, now now since I've already said this a million times, I'll beat this fucking horse into the ground. I I don't really listen to mainstream music at all anymore. It's it's either music with no words or because we're trying to find a song or it's just you guys yeah, yeah. so it, it's it's something different when people you know like when yeah. squeezy asked me the other day like who who's my favorite oh, yeah. modern artist i'm like i don't i don't fucking i don't I, they're, they're not even on my radar it's weird to even say that it's like Come any guy that probably has five thousand songs on his computer dude. i have more than five thousand yeah. songs i probably have closer probably to a like hundred a hundred thousand Jesus. songs how do you not a hundred no 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 four on the little hard drive there, there's probably 400,000 songs. 100,000 songs of those are just songs with beats. Okay. So yeah, when yeah. Ryan and I are freestyle, there's like 23 hours of just freestyle beats. So you just sit there, and it's like, if That's we good. hear the same song, it, it's like kind of miraculous. Yeah, okay. You, you know? Yeah, okay. So sometimes I think that whatever the program is, it's only going to play like 
number one, number 500, number 500, and then just like, but it's always going to play those. Yeah. It's the most weirdest thing. And because uh, I'm into music so much, I'll start to recognize if it's a playlist. So like my old my old phone, um, I'd have, you when you could actually, I'd put all the music on because I could actually put the headphone on and I'd be like on the subway in Los Angeles trying to just hold on to this fucking pole and not make eye contact with anybody. And um, I'd be like, it just played this song the same way yesterday. Like, but I have it on random. It, it, and it's just how it is. So you'd have to like pick a different song and then hit random from there. And then maybe it's not the same. But I start I pick, pick up on shit like that. That's like my thing. I pick up on stuff like that. Patterns of music. All this weird ass shit. I, I don't know. I don't know why it, why it is that way. It plays. Well, it makes you valuable. Fucking yes. weird, weird ways our mind work that <laughs> aren't like other people. Wants to make you valuable. We had we we've talked about uh the, the Rick Rubin effect. That, you know why Rick Rubin's like valuable? What? He don't make any music. He don't play a single instrument, bro. He's a tastemaker. He has good taste. You know what I mean? Dude, an interior decorator, bro. They just have good taste. You know what I mean? Go go to you pay me, or. I'll go to the store with your credit card. I don't have a limit. I will decorate your entire house top to bottom based off things you told me, and we're going to do it because I have good taste, and I'm going to get paid 10 grand for that. You know what I mean? Kanye West also, like, yeah, he's extremely talented. Great taste. You know what I mean? And, like, a lot of that comes from, like, Max has great taste. You know what I mean? Max has good taste. Uh, whenever, like, people, people who make good music it was their choice to say it like this instead of say it like that and it it, it, it becomes it, it's um i don't want to say bias but uh it's objective but like if a person makes a, a objectively good song they either had people around them with good taste giving them suggestions or they just had good taste in the fact that it would be generally accepted by everyone that, most people that heard it you know what i mean it's just having good taste could take you super far that alone and then I guess, <clears throat> you know, that mixed with uh, moving in a correct manner or an interesting manner. But that's what, that's what the cult cultural scene is, is about, really, especially hip-hop. Because when you, when you talk about hip-hop, you, you can also get into, like, <clears throat> the fashion and style immediately. You know what I mean? Uh, fashion is now synonymous with hip-hop. But, but it, from, it was never meant to be synonymous. It's not one of the pillars of rap. Yeah. Or the pillars of hip hop. Yeah, I just have to say it's that. Like the evolution, I guess, the, between yeah. the young thugs and ASAP Rockies and that starting to rap about it, you know, and then it made it cool to like have designer, which like at, at a certain rate, it like kind of fucking sucks because now it's he's like he's like what the fuck are you saying? ASAP Rocky. <laughs> you don't like ASAP Rocky? <laughs> Cameron? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm 23, bro. Don't, don't fucking, this is my this is my dad's You're birthday. You're 23. My, my dad was born this year. I can count. That's all I'm saying. That sounds like don't be a menace. All I'm saying is I, I, all, all I'm saying. I can count. Here, That's all yep. I'm saying. I believe you. I, believe but, you. Um, I can count on it. Yeah. Cameron. Yeah. Uh, Cameron yeah, get, started wearing feet, pink shit. Feet and, hanging and, out the and, at the Lambo in Cameron the pink. Cameron walks so Kanye can run. In ASAP right. Rocky yes. and all the You're right, yep. because you sale. say Cameron started wearing pink, and immediately I'm thinking of Kanye West in the pink polo, but that was, he was paying that homage. Was he was paying homage, huh? In a pink fur coat. Uh, yep. Mixing. Yep. All right, so listen, the reference was not spot on, but like fucking, you got, you got the point. Yeah, I was just, yeah. I was just saying, yeah. we just had to pick out the correct one. Cameron, but kill right. a cam. Kill a cam. Kind of made the plot pink. Not everybody knows pink. Right. Yeah. Right, right, so. right. Yeah, but he had on the, the, what was it, pink and blue shit you had on? Is that Phoenix? It's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a Miami Heat. Miami South Beach Heat. That bitch looks is fucking. Nice. I love it because I, I, Miami it's pink, Heat. it's pink, blue, and black. And then I, look, bro, I'm not gonna give away all the game. I went to play to his closet, but like the one down towards Pittsburgh, <laughs> and they had all, they had black, ninety five. I don't fucking know, bro. Black Air Maxes. I'm gonna get my black card revoked. I just got it back because it's spring now, but I'm gonna get my black card revoked for not knowing the Air Maxes. But uh, pink and blue match them perfectly. And I found, 
I, I've been holding on to this jersey um, almost like I only wore it like once or twice. But then I found then I found these Air Maxes that match it perfectly. And yeah, I'll be outside, outside, man. Like, like all night. I just, I when just the birds wear my come uniform. Up, I start singing to them. My uniform. Yeah, oh, uniform oh. drip. You yep. Bitching about the birds this morning. Oh, bro. The birds. I come from like addiction background, so <laughs> now if I'm up, if I'm not going to sleep. And the bird, I start hearing the birds chirp. I'm done. I'm anxiety, mm. a panic attack, bro. I'm like, oh, fuck, I fucked yep. up my whole, the whole re- rest of my day. Yep. The whole next yep. day, bro. Yep. I'm set back mm. now. But, like, that comes from, like, uh, three weekend for, like, three days straight. <laughs> I don't sleep with the Wait. shit, man. You ever try, uh, Seroquel? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes. Serotonin yes. out here is wonderful. Yes. I'm missing Serotonin a lot would be great I for you, Ryan. I think I tried that at least two times. Y- yeah. So yeah. I'll go ahead because I've already talked about all my drug experiences on this motherfucking oh, thing. That. I don't know. Seroquel. Seroquel is a sleeping sleep, sleep aid, yeah. mm-hmm. and um, supposedly if you can fight staying awake for more than thirty minutes, you'll just start seeing the most craziest shit. Shit. Yeah. Okay. So all right, guys. <laughs> Me, I'm. A psycho not that's the kind of shit I was into yeah. that's what I was like always getting like into I'm not trying to be room. like I'm not trying to be like up for 15 days seeing demons like on meth Shout I'm trying to see <laughs> right nope yeah. uh-uh, that's not Russian my life <clears throat> I'm not out of my life <laughs> but the thing the thing is so I'm sitting there I'm sitting there in, in on the couch guys and I'm watching TV and I keep seeing this thing like walk past me now. Now at this point in my life, I probably hadn't tripped more than maybe maybe five times. So it's not like on anything at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look, so it's yeah. not like it's not maybe more. Son of a bitch. Maybe. No, no. Let me scratch. Let me let me rewind. <laughs> let me go back to living with the hippie over there in the house, right right there. We did a lot of acid in that house over there. <laughs> you um, got acid? No. Okay. Th- so. Acid is like crack for black people. They, they're afraid of black people. Are afraid of acid and hallucinogens. I don't know. I did. Shri- no, I get down with shrooms every okay. once in a while. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Shorty Sugar Shack. Uh, they sell them, yeah. motherfuckers. I probably shouldn't say that on here. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> what? It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Oh, we can bleep that out later. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, <laughs> um, I, I just I, I don't know how many times I trip, bro. Yeah. Before I. I, someone's like, you should try this shit. Yeah. So I'm sitting there watching TV, and this thing kept walking by. And out, out of your per- perception? Yeah, yeah, out of my peripheral. peripheral. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? I'm like, I guess this shit really is working. To where, <laughs> to where, like, finally, when I turn to look, I can fucking, like, see the thing turn and walk. Oh, and I'm like, no. oh, oh no. I'm like, that's not really what I'm trying to see. I'll just go to sleep, I guess. <laughs> you know, yeah. so um, here's the thing. So in the house that my daughter, like, we brought her home to, um, we, we'd be doing drugs in this motherfucking house. More more trippy shit. Yeah. Okay, because like I said, I already explained. About it. So we're all fucked up. And uh, her mom's like, keeps telling me she sees this guy in this like tan trench coat tan trench coat yeah. like a fucking executive trench coat with the hat and all this shit she's like but when i see this guy his feet are never touching the ground so i i explained to her this guy that i saw and it was that guy before she ever told me Ew. about the guy okay and that's what we've, we've always called him the man. And we don't know we don't know any way other way to fucking speak about him, but he is one creepy motherfucker. Fuck. But she would see this guy just in the fucking house. So that that should creep me the fuck out. Yeah, creep me the fuck out. I uh, never really ever saw him, right? But um, her grandma calls her, and her grandma lives on like the other the other side of the other driveway on the other side of the road. So she goes up there. She's like up there, opens up this box of photos. And these box of photos are like old as fuck, dude. Like from the 70s or or the 60s or some shit like that, bro. Very first photo is that man, bro. And she's like, this is the guy I keep seeing. So. Wait, wait, wait. And what what was it? It was. Oh, it was always Seroquel that you would stay up off of? Or like... I only did Seroquel twice. Okay. The other time I did it somewhere, and um, 
But were, were you guys only ever fucked up when you saw this guy? Like She would see him not fucked up. She would see him not fucked up. I never saw him. So so you, you have a only, vast... Only that time. Only you, that time. You but have my a daughter vast uh, experience with... Says she's seen. You have a vast experience with, like, taking psychedelics, right? Oh, yeah. So, like, have you ever... And, like, you're, you're cool with mushrooms and stuff like that. You ever psychedelics? Okay. No, he's too crazy, bro. Look at him. Mean, look at him. Well, straight, straight to the vein, uh, brother. It might help uh-huh. you out. Um, so, no, no, they say, no like, expect DMT. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. You got to finish nah. that story. You gotta oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. My bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll save that though. spot. The other, oh, the other time with the oh, fucking... Wait. Oh, wait. I, got a, I got a question. So, wait. Where did y'all go to go see the photo album again? It was in the same house? She went across the street to her grandma's house. She went across the street to her grandma's house. Mm-hmm. And... Who did her grandma say was the dude in the photo? She didn't know who the guy was. She didn't know who he was. She just had these box of photos. They weren't even her photos? Yeah. They were, what, like left there or something? They were, so her her <coughs> grandma lived like in that fucking, that house, like the whole, the whole, like, okay, so it's, it's like this trailer park right down across from Conley's. She lived like up back at the end of this lane, like, like my, like, Joe's whole life. Okay. So, she, he's she's only ever lived there, and I don't know how the fuck she got the box of photos, um, because she had the photos before he, Joe moved into the house where my daughter lives now. So, it, it, it's just like you got to find out the significance of that guy. Well, now we probably can now, but you know, yeah, back I, then probably I, I have no clue. But he's yeah. standing there and he has like these leather gloves on and shit. And he is just like, he looks like, he looks like, like a, like a Trent, like a, like a, like a mobster. Like a hitman? Yeah. 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 You seen uh, The Professional? Yeah. 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 It's kind of like, with Leon, uh, no, he has like the, the fucking hat that like Dick Tracy would wear, a fedora. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it's from the thirties. I don't think they have colored pictures from that. No, maybe the forties, maybe, but I think st- yeah. people still dress like that in the fifties. I think so. I I don't really know, but that's that's my extent of the fucking cerebral shit. So okay. there you go. So DMT though, yes. All right, and then like uh, you could pro- you could probably throw acid in there, and I I'll probably just throw mushrooms in there, and then you have like obviously like your mescalines and um, well, then, stuff yeah. like that. So. <clears throat> Like my my belief is like especially with DMT, it's like a f- vibrational frequency type of deal, <clears throat> mm-hmm. where because that's why I wanted to ask you if it was only when you were fucked up, but like different people also just vibrate at higher and lower frequencies themselves, um, which like opens up the conversation for like this the the, the ghost and paranormal beliefs. You you have any like do you believe in like paranormal stuff like that? Well, you were at the. The thing last week, or did you leave uh, when that fucking picture flew up? Yeah, I was there. Yep. I, yeah. Yep. Yep. What? Yeah. So last week at the at the venue, the uh, the picture frame just like came mowing off the wall. Like and not like I don't think it even just like just fell straight. And, like it like Ray Lee's sitting like kind of far like away from the wall, and this thing like fell like onto him and fell onto the other side of him. Like you know. What so, section of the room? Uh, all the if you're on the stage looking towards the door, he was all the way to the right side, uh, like where you would walk out of the bathrooms. And somebody said, "Was it you that said you were setting up and you heard walking yeah. over there?" Yeah, and I wanted to tell Don because I'm supposed to. He said to tell him whenever any of that stuff happens, because I guess that's what stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, so he was saying back in the day, um, this stuff used to happen all the time, constantly. I guess where. Uh, the Slippery Rock Succeed stuff is that was an ice cream parlor and they sold as soon as they sold all the equipment out of the ice cream parlor it was he said it had stopped oh so I always wondered if hallucinogens um, you know you tweak and you see shit but like you know people always end up seeing demons or angels like why yeah. is it always the same shit yeah. or do we think it just kind of like lifts the veil a little bit opens your mind <coughs> that's and that was kind of like with uh with like the the psychedelics cuz like i think i think people might just be like losing their fucking minds when when it comes to like methamphetamines and stuff like that but like with the psychedelic drugs that like you actually like hallucinate 
Like, I, I do feel like it is kind of like lifting the veil, especially with DMT. I've done DMT. I've done, I've done DMT a couple of times, and like, DMT is the spirit molecule. You know DMT? I've never done it. it, it DMT. Have you, ever heard, have you ever heard about it? I've heard absolute rap about it. Yeah. Okay. So I it's like. One time, and I'm pretty sure I spoke to some things. Yeah, some like beings, like interdimensional. And like, dude, if they're, if they're, there's probably a bunch of different types of aliens. But, like, I, I feel like the ones that are probably most pre prevalent in, like, our life are, like, the interdimensional ones. Where, like, <clears throat> there, there may be, like, evidence, but, that like, then, then they're just gone because, like, you know, I, interdimensional. They with intention, and my question was, are the machine elves, like, they talk about real, is there something here designing and coasting us along? Yeah. And I swear to God, like, that's the perfect wor wording because... They wow, it's, it's hailing, guys. Yeah. What the hell? They answered, Cl close like, that. yes, we are real, yes, we exist, and what I saw was, like, when you're going up the top of a roller coaster... Maybe we should pause it. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> so they were click, 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 spinning the wheel, like, I wondered if they did, and as soon as I went to enter the ride, they just, it was gone. Damn. So it's like, yeah, you're on the ride, and yeah, we're pushing it, but that's all you need. That's to all, do. yeah, 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 yeah. Because you asked too. Yes. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, you know, like uh, we we only it only lasts like f five minutes or so. Damn. Uh, depending on like how big of a hit, it only lasts like a couple of seconds. But uh, all of that supposedly, allegedly, the government is testing people intravenously, and they're talking to these these extra dimensional things uh, through the, you know, and they're like writing these things down yeah. and talking about all this stuff that they see. Kind of like the MK Ultra with the LSD yeah. back in the day. Um, I, well, MK Ultra is like a little bit different, um, but yeah, there, so what it's, it's on the idea of astral, astral projection. Mm -hmm. Ryan, you're more like, you know, stuff more like about, maybe this is where you can talk a little bit. Um, you know, more about like uh, the auras and feeling the the, in the vibes intuitions and, and stuff and like that. that. So I don't get any of those kinds of fi those vibes unless like in, unless I like see the crackhead. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm like so you, you know what I mean. So I can't like Ryan can go somewhere <laughs> and uh -huh. he automatically like knows. Uh -huh. Talk a little bit about like or explain what the fuck it is like what you feel. Um, the only way I can really explain the feeling, um, being able to feel tension in a room, the vibe or energy of a person, place, or thing, depending of what it's gone through and or going through, um, I guess ever since I was little I was able to do that. I used to be able to see things whenever I was young. My mom told me I'd see like things kind of walk and like things on the floor apparently, like just something that looked like my dad. I was like on the ground but I don't remember that exactly um, with smoking pot or doing any kind of psychedelics I definitely feel like that can enhance the state of mind that you're in especially if you're focused if you believe in the chakras and the energies and everything and if you are open up in any of them and especially all of them um, that could only like enhance the sensitivity even more and bring more shit about it which you know hence like kind of opening the door to like things do you kinda... think that crystals and shit like that actually have the power to like change a vibration yeah and um i guess they can probably alter people alter moods and like like amethyst and stuff you know like actual quartz crystal like the energy they say that it can't be you know created or destroyed so it can be harnessed manifested through different ways um projected into different areas and lights pr people places things on and on so the one thing i think that might have been me i was gonna say i heard it like <sighs> uh i think that might have also been me okay because i was gonna say oh that's creepy <laughs> we're talking about right on shit. cue yeah yeah i was gonna say Holy viewers fuck. decide Go ahead. um Go ahead. so <clears throat> when my brother was still alive um the one place him and the I say mother of the children loosely were staying mm. at, saying no names. Um, Kim, Kim, Kim. Fuck, fuck Kim! Um, the one room, it was, it was an old bedroom, 
there's like a bunch of Scooby-Doo toys, like stuffed animals and whatnot. It wasn't that they gave the feeling off. It wasn't like a panel bedroom and a light can be on in there and I can feel like a tension, a heaviness over there, like something was wrong, just didn't feel quite right. The whole, the rest of the place was fine, but it was just even looking at it. I but you guys said you guys like were fucking around with like Ouija boards no. and shit. Oh no. boy. No, 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 no. Oh this, is, this is before um, they even moved in. So they found out it was one of the fan members hung or overdosed in okay. that room. Okay. So I could feel like the tension, like okay. the, the, like anything negative that could have happened before, just something wasn't setting right in like, I guess my, myself, I guess I can say like, not like a sick up feeling. It kind of starts up in the head, almost like there's sinus pressure. And if you've ever put yourself in a dark room, completely like turn everything off, every electronic, and feel like the dark around you, like whenever you are a child, no nightlight, lights off, go to bed kind of deal, and you can hear that ringing in your ears. Okay, yeah. That silent ringing in your <laughs> they got, ears. They have like the world's quietest room. And like there's a challenge that goes with it too, and it's like it's, it's just like, or something like, like ten minutes, and like mm-hmm. like most people like can't do it, yeah. which is so wild. Like you can well, you how... can hear like the, the your blood rushing to your, your own head. heartbeat and yeah. everything, every little thing apparently. So um, that's the best way I can describe like the feeling I get if there's just something not right. If uh, I can be a person, um, <clears throat> whatever. Don't you think that there's like you could just like. If there's, like, if you, because uh, I believe in ghosts, right? And, like, uh, like demons feed off fear, right? So, like, if, like, you know, there's a ghost in your house, and every time you, like, hear anything, you're like, what the fuck was that? They feed off that, right? So, don't you think you could just, like, okay, so, like, you know, I'm a demon, so I know about demons. Uh, <clears throat> so, and, like, I've dated a couple, too. Uh, so, like, like, you know, the devil was a trickster, right? Right. So, couldn't you just, like, start, like, I don't know, doing a little, little funny shit? You know what I mean? Joking around, and then like I always now they're like the, instead of like wanting to possess you and fucking like harvest your soul or whatever, couldn't like wouldn't like the demon just be like, oh, all right, this guy's all right, this guy's cool. <laughs> like guess, now you got like you now like you got like of, demon hunt. Now you, you got Beelzebub in, in your pocket. You have a lot, a lot of that <laughs> going on in like uh, in the rap culture. I oh guess, yeah, but, you know, yeah. like a little Uzi Vert. If you, supposedly, if you say his name fast enough, it's Lucifer. And, you know, just all this weird shit that goes on um, without even getting into, uh, without getting into, like, Sean Combs shit, but just talking about, like, all of the other weird high strangeness that we, you know. Shamar let, did he stay at his house? Really, Shamar? Sure. Hey. On the road. Oh, on the road. Hey. Come yeah. on, bro. Sh- Shamar, you- since oh, you're, bro, since you you're closer it. into, like, the... Uh, I heard he came <laughs> to the... Uh, the champagne nostalgia shoot. Though. Listen, <laughs> listen, bro. First of all, he did. He did. I'm not going to say him and be like, no, he wasn't there because he was there. Right, he was at the champagne but nostalgia shoot. He was, bro, he told me straight up. He said, Shamar said you were filming. I was with him the other day. He came straight. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. What y'all did? Yeah. Me and Diddy? Yeah. Oh, I got the contract, man. Yeah. What the fuck? I'm trying to change my life. <laughs> to answer Barry's question, uh, I... I don't, I don't want to sit here and act like I know any better, you know, none of us know until we're dead ourselves, but uh, all throughout my childhood, I did see a lot of things. I've had many spirit, ghost, whatever experiences, believe it or not, but I saw a lot of shit, yeah. and it scared me, yeah. and <clears throat> my mom, <clears throat> excuse me, my dad's Christian, my mom's Wiccan, so, you know, Ooh. there's a lot of different beliefs yeah. floating around my parents about what those were. Uh, but my mom taught me how to visualize in your head how to how to close your mind to all that and don't let anything in but mm-hmm. God. And, you know, mm-hmm. um, but as as I got older, I saw them less and less because I got better at doing that, and I was always able to pray it away if I had, you know, demonic nightmares or I yeah. felt like there was something watching me. I I've done so many prayers in this house. I doubt you would have a spiritual experience because we don't allow that shit in this house. Okay. Yeah. Um, but like <clears throat> you said they're attracted to negative energy and they feed off. Yeah. Yep. So I can tell you, in my adult life, I've had a few dreams where, um, I don't know if you've heard of the hat man or the old hag, or like the demon that's trying to suck something out of you. Don't give it fear. Just pray it away. And if that's not something you believe in, whatever it is, don't give it fear. Because like you said, that does feed it. And what I've experienced is that it pisses them off because they want to fear. They want you to fear. Mm, So they'll start going a little harder. What they'll do is trick you, like you said. Yeah. Like, I said, I'm not afraid of you. You know, I have God. Like, watch this then. 
fails to yeah. watch this, and I'm going to go after this person that you love. <sighs> I, I had um, <clears throat> I, I definitely younger when I was younger I had bouts of uh, sleep paralysis and I most primarily got sleep paralysis whenever I was uh, worried about my my daughter's uh, my daughter waking up in the middle of the night and not being able to like tend to her or whatever okay, the fuck yeah. you know you, you my thing was I either couldn't move with the sleep paralysis the old hag type shit or it would be kind of like see how there's like this low this low lighting right now but like these lights would also kind of be on but not projecting any light really so you know it's nighttime kind of like a fucking movie you oh, know okay. it's nighttime yeah, yeah, yeah. and let's say i have to go down there to get to her room so you 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 wake up you come walk in and like all the there's like a little bit of weird lighting bro yeah. and, and you make it to the fucking steps and by the time you make it to the steps you wake back up at the fucking in the bed so, and this this has happened to me like i can remember like maybe maybe three times it happening a bunch of times like yeah. so you every time and then you get to the door but next the next time you don't know how to open the fucking door then finally you're back then you're back over there you open the fucking door and then there's no baby oh, and, and oh, it's no. like the most oh, no. <laughs> weirdest fucking thing then you wake up and the reason why there's no baby there is because, like, let's let's say her mom finally came home uh. and actually had, had like, picked her up and, like, was doing something with yeah. her. And it was just, like, uh. the stress of, like, all this bullshit. Yeah. So, so after, when I was living with my mom, I'd get sleep paralysis for some reason there. And I don't know, I don't know why, but that's where I used to get the, the shit with the old hag. It would be, like... This old bitch shitting on, not shitting, sitting <laughs> on my, my chest. chest, probably <laughs> trying to shit on it. No, but no. I'm not into German shit like that. Hey, so I'm not gonna lie, dude. A demon trying to suck something out of me. This I was like, bro. Hey. No, <laughs> <laughs> let's get down. <laughs> oh, hey, no, 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 no. Have you ever had any experiences like that, Shamar? Me, no. Do you believe in it? Are you religious at all? No, um, I, I just. I'm out of my damn business. <laughs> For lack of a better time. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, like, even if, it, like, all right, so it's like, you know, yeah. black, black people, you can't watch scary movies with black people, bro. Oh, yeah. You, you can't. Know, do. So do you, do you like, keep it, like, more, more like unacknowledged? Like, if even let's say that you might have thought you heard something, you just are like, nope. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so like, last week we were talking about nope. um, how August and I got this book, and it's about... Um, People, I think their letters that they wrote about alien encounters and shit. We we got to the first fucking page. That's really loud. We got through the first page, and by the time I got to that last sentence, I was like, "We we can't we can't at least read this in the house. We gotta like we gotta be not at the house and read this like somewhere the fuck else. These motherfuckers are gonna come here, you know? Like, like that? It's like that. I, I, you I was have, like, you have it? yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, when you it, completely I creep the fuck oh, out. I love shit like. Dude. Yeah, and it was, I don't even remember, but it, we still have it. Go ahead. The, again, like the, the power, the energy, even like within writing, because that's someone that's a person putting an emphasis into their like states of mind, their yeah. creation, whatever, that manifestation. Yeah. You, you give it attention yeah. and it attracts it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Attention I, attracts attention. I came to a point, because like I've like seen some shit and been through some shit. Like it was actually back on the note of my brother, like after he passed. And um, the widow was taking a picture, like doing a selfie, and very faintly, I, I think I still have the picture somewhere. Um, you can see an outline standing beside her. Mm. So I like fucked with the visuals on the picture. I like redlined it, did everything I could, and standing beside her was the perfect outline of my brother. Whoa. Ear, face, all eyes, like standing right beside her. Whoa. I've never had like these crazy white people. Ah, I've never had, no. I'm not white, Shamar. <laughs> okay, I got like sleep paralysis a couple times. I did cap about that. I've had it like four or five times. But See. other than that, that's, that's about it. But like with you not like acknowledging, like I right, so like it still be scary. You can't move, but like do do you not have like the mental manifestation of of like a like a true fear personified, which would be like you're in the middle of the night and somebody's like. You have like an aggressor there while you can't do anything. You don't have those that just be you can't move. Yeah, yeah I, 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 in my rational mind, to, to like 
ever since like I've calmed down and like literally like found my mind after I lost it, I had like 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 That's real 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 to thunder. That's loud. Good control of it, bro. Like yeah. so like once I got sleep paralysis, I'm like, fuck, <laughs> damn. Right, I can't just, move. Fuck. Yeah. Huh. Just gotta, nice. gotta wait the shit out. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> most people would panic. Dude, well, I, I, I get the thing where you, <laughs> you can't move, and then I try to like get an arm up or roll off the couch. Yeah, That's the main thing. I get sleep paralysis if I fall asleep on the couch. Almost 99% of the time, if I, if I fall asleep with something on and I'm on the couch, I'm waking up all fucked up like that. When I was younger, that's that's like the forms of having an out of body experience. Like that, it starts with the sleep paralysis because mm-hmm. that happened to me all the time whenever I was younger. Um, they say you're younger, so you're more susceptible to things around you. you don't quite understand them. Uh, I guess myself in that case as well. So, anytime I would fall asleep on the couch, a very old home, and it was cozy. It was my childhood home. My brother and I, you know, all all my family. So. I would fall asleep in the middle of the night on the couch, kind of start getting this weird feeling over me, kind of like hearing like a whirring, and I'd start to fall asleep. I'd wake up on the couch, could see the, t- could see the TV on, but normally be static, which is weird. So then I'd try to start moving, and I'd get myself out of my body, I'd roll myself out, and I'd start walking around the house, kind of seeing the kitchen, and the one night I was very sick, I think it, I was getting over um, pneumonia or something. And um, dead of the winter, I went outside. I actually got outside, and I'm looking around, and it's like my whole entire yard's dark. So, and then I woke up, and then I actually stood outside. And when I walked outside, I heard something growl. I'm like, nope, I'm going the fuck back inside. Nope. I'm the, going the fuck the, back. And then a dog, there, we had a family dog. He's on the chain, but it wasn't his growl. And that's like the main thing that they say about the, the like the astral projection is once you can realize that you're awake in the dream, you can actually control it in some way. But I think, you know, that's the difference between like what the, they say that the reason why they destroyed the Tower of Babel is because they built this tower like a mile up right above as close as they could to the firmament without getting through the firmament, I guess. Or why why couldn't they build it any bigger? I don't know. Maybe it, that's maybe that's just where they were at the time. Um, and allegedly, the, the these high priests were up at the top of the Tower of Babel, and they were astral projecting into heaven, and like were able to describe what heaven looked like. And oh, that's, that's why nice. that's why he destroyed the Tower of Babel. So that's it's nice. kind of crazy. All of that stuff kind of like, kind of coincides. Even the idea of like every time we're all like we were younger, we were younger, um, because you have the that gland that's like right in your chest right here, that that produces. Um, I, I believe it produces the DMT or an accident when you're asleep, and uh, your pineal gland or the uh, pituitary gland. I forget which one. One's up in your head and the other one's in your chest. But both, they they're trying to crystallize. In, in in a calcium crystal, your pituitary gland or the or the pineal gland, whichever one it is, and um, because it is what allows us to interact, like or, or engage more of our mind, I guess, yeah. or whatever the fuck. But you know that's why they say you need that that iodine and, and all this other weird shit. But um, that's why they took the iodine out of the salt. They, they used to have the iodine inside the bread because everybody needed bread and then now like everybody's glucose free or whatever the fuck all of this all of the stuff that's happening with the food and even the drinks well I guess it's still food but all of that stuff is to try and detach us from like our 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 sixth sense we have more senses but we only really know about like just those just those five that we yeah. can that we feel. can that interacts with the th- Three dimensional world, right? Because we're like fourth dimensional beings yeah. and interacting in a three dimensional world, I trying think. to find out, yeah, trying to find out what's what's going on with uh, the fifth dimension. That's yeah. why they like had CERN going on the other day yeah. and shit. Well, you said something about uh, what would you say? M- mass can't be destroyed or created, or what energy can't be energy. created. So or that's destroyed. what you're doing with CERN. Manifested, it can only yeah. transfer. Uh, have you seen the movie Lucy? Anybody seen Lucy? Uh, the the lady that gets super duper smart. 
she gets like uh, drug smugglers hide like kidnap her, hide a bag of drugs in her, and like it, it gives her the ability to access a hundred percent of right, her right. mind, and she starts Probably being able to like she she does um like remote viewing. She she's uh when she hits a hundred, it's enlightenment. She's like she like vaporizes and like isn't like a, a being in her body anymore. She's like whatever transcendence. Yeah, she, that's yeah, like yeah. what they're. So even the movie Transcendence, that's like what these uh, Hollywood elitists and shit are actually trying to do. They're trying to leave their human bodies to, uh, there it is again, those machine elves. They're trying to merge with these machines to become something different. They're, they're not going to be homo sapiens anymore. They're going to be like meta, meta sapien yeah. or some shit yeah. like that. Uh, which uh, a lot of people believe that when you try to copy the brain and put it into the machine, you're it's this the ghost in the shell. That's why they made that movie oh, yeah. back in the eighties. Yeah. Um, Isn't there an just, anime for that too? Oh, yeah. It is originally an anime. Yeah, yeah so, they actually did the new movie. Yes, yeah, yeah, so that's oh, once again with Scarlett Johansson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, that's back before Hollywood got woke, or before we understood what wokeness was. It was probably fucking in there. We just didn't understand. I woke up and had coffee. Does that's that not the kind of woke we're I talking know. about, Ryan. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the uh the the um the idea that they're trying to put their br- their brains their brains into some kind of machine so they can live forever is exactly why they make movies like Elysium. Yeah. We don't we don't even understand that the word it's asylum, Elysium. They're just pronouncing it different. And where the motherfuckers are trying to do is just get into a vessel to go somewhere else so that they can get medically healed. Now, what the fuck does that sound like nowadays? We have all these migrants and, and immigrants coming to America claiming asylum to get medically healed or whatever the fuck the case is. And, and it's just like right there in our face. We, they've been saying the shit that's going on and why the world's crumbling. It's it's literally in our face. It's a joke. Man, some of these Netflix movies or it, it, it talk about being right in your face. I think there's one called Don't Look Up. It's really good. Oh, it's got shit. Jonah Hill. But um, uh, you're saying that take take uh, take their brain out on a literal level in the movie Get Out. <clears throat> the movie Get Out, where they like kidnapping black people. Well, that goes right. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go they ahead. they kidnap black people and they put uh, the, the the wealthy seventy year old man's I'm brain. Yeah, go ahead. The wealthy seventy year old man's brain into like the young like athletic black body and then that guy's like gla- he, like the soul is still in there the soul it, the the guy's soul is still in there and but it's like the, the brain is sunken somebody in. else and he's go yeah they take him to the sunken place right well so all scary, of that dude. stuff goes by, right back with probably what uh, uh, the we'll just we'll just make it allegedly like Kim Kardashian did with with uh with Kanye West. Okay. So we even have like probably the same shit because we know we know that these bitches are are into some kind of uh they are cabalist witches. You can go and look on Ariana Grande's you can look on Ariana Ariana Grande's uh Wikipedia. It'll say that she's she is a um okay. She Kabbalist. is a Kabbalist. Yeah, so the... Ancient Jewish mysticism. Yeah, yeah. yeah like esoteric. Is, I, I guess esoteric mysticism, I read, yeah. I, read, I had like a pamphlet of the Kabbal. With a... Uh, <laughs> um, I had like a, a pamphlet while I was like in the county at one time. So, But like, I read it and I was like, oh, this shit makes sense. So there's two <laughs> types of Kabbals. You have like the Kabbal that's trying to like... They, they say that it is like the New World Order Cabal, yeah. like something that's trying to rival the government. But okay. what we're talking about is like is like real, why Hollywood's called Hollywood, because the strongest wand uh, that can manifest oh, the most made out of, uh, out of Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. So and it, we talked about it before, about the bevel it, and how the tuning fork is, isn't the devil, it isn't a pitchfork that the devil it's uses. Tuning it's fork. a tuning yeah. fork. And you have the antennas on top of the TV that are called a bevel it. Yeah. Or I think that's how you pronounce it. But I'm impressed that you know this. I know you know this. But the... Uh, so many podcasts, so much research. The the idea behind all of that stuff, it all goes back to why are all, why is it these main women, even Madonna is a Kabbalist, yeah. which um, they all have like this red yarn 
that they all wear, and it's like it looks like it's just some red yarn. Yeah. But it means something. Sim- is it like symbolic? Mm-hmm. That the <clears throat> Kabbalist witch. And so basically, these these females are typically handlers. Yeah. So Kim Kardashian is always oh. handling a high profile person, oh. and it links right back into the last guy that they saw. That last guy, like Mac Miller's. Um, personal trainer is supposedly the guy that was supposed to sedate Kanye West but Kanye West says I'm, I'm not doing these drugs anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I want to be myself yeah. my, this is, you know uh. so it, it, all of these it, it's too much of a coincidence yeah. it goes right back into like the the what's that guy that's all measured out that we were talking about last the, week? Uh, Petruvian man, the Petruvian yeah. man. Like, there's too much of a coincidence yeah. for everything to be this yeah. way. Yeah, for all of these women to be somehow looped into yeah. all of this shit. Even OJ Simpson is is fucking wild, man. I I found a series of different YouTube channels, and this is what I've been on lately. Uh, a lot of. Uh, iceberg explanation videos um and they have like so many different icebergs they have hollywood yeah. icebergs yeah. they had um I, I stumbled on as you just said oj i stumbled on one that like very very convincingly told the story of oj's son who before the murders happened had stints in the psych ward where he bit um you know the ner- one of the nurses there in this this lengthy criminal record, and like as the story told it, like O.J. took the rap, well went on trial for because he didn't want his son to be caught, and before he was ever, I think it was it before he was a suspect, something like that. Um, oh, his son wasn't even a suspect, and his and his dad uh, O.J. Hired him like the most expensive lawyer humanly possible. Never even brought got brought up as a sub, uh, suspect. So like I've been that's what I've been on lately, especially with being back to work. Now now that I'm back to work and it's not just like I'm at my house because if I'm at my house, like she wants to watch a, a movie or something like that, which is fine. I love movies, big movie person. Um, but I also need my 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 healthy dose of like personal. Let me dive into a new topic and learn about a new thing. You know what I mean? And um. That, like I like I like documentaries and stuff like that. That's, a lot that's of time, a lot of time, if I'm home, I'm with I'm with Grissa. <clears throat> so like, you know, you gotta like sway. Like, okay, well then let's let's uh, let's watch something we both like. You know what I mean? And like a lot, of, I just I have so many different interests. That's what was cool. Whenever I met August, is she was into the same shit. We could just both yeah. watch the yeah, same yeah. shit. So it was like Joe Rogan. We just listened to Joe Rogan until they took him off off YouTube. He's back on. Oh well, maybe I'll start listening to that bald bastard again. Yeah, I he's, he just had Neil Brennan on. Neil the Neil Brennan interview was he's had him on a couple of times. Okay, but okay. um, I believe his title was comedian. But this motherfucker, Ayahuasca Journeys, and all like this guy, I, I actually like saw that the interview was out, and I was like, uh, I like didn't watch it for a couple of days, and I got desperate, and I was like, oh, it's Joe Rogan, it can't be too bad. Right. The other one that's really good was this girl named Um. Riley, uh, she was a swimmer, and uh, Riley, Gaines. Riley Gaines. Yep, she's. Did you watch it? Well, I know about Riley Gaines because the uh, the trans guy took all the awards yeah. and was yeah. like lapping these bitches, and um, she was like one of the only people they to took. Speak out. They took the guy out. I forget what his name is right now, um, but uh, Thomas. Yeah, is his real Leah name? Thomas. Leah Thomas. So yeah. they took Leah Thomas, and they're they like, "Yeah, she can have all your." All your shit. Like, well, the- there was a there was a situation where they they went all right. So because I just listened to it today, actually. Um, so there was one race or whatever, and it was it was like um you know you place for it or whatever. Leah Thomas and Riley Gaines went head to head. So they measure the time down to the thousandth of a second. You know what I mean? Um, they got the exact same time, right? Exact same time. They didn't give them two trophies. So. What she said, that the way that she was told, because it goes deeper into like, um, like, uh, there being like the agenda stuff and this and that, like, look this way, bring, up, make the trans movements, even though it only makes up five percent of people in the, the well, America. But um, they were told that when 
pictures were being taken and they were on video that Leo Thomas was supposed to have the trophy in her hand and in, in his hand. It's his hand, you know? So like, um, and then they also like, so like they did a thing in San Francisco, San Francisco. She went to go speak at a college in San Francisco and, um, she like got held hostage yeah. by protesters yeah. and the police were by like, Antifa. they're, they're, yeah. Po the police were like, we have been told in every circumstance we are to appear as allies to this community. Yep. And like, dude, it's just fucked up, man. And that that right there, was, it goes right back with that summer of love bullshit. Um, they're, they're telling us that um, none of this stuff is happening, but you can go on to YouTube or on Facebook and you can watch it live. Yeah. You can watch them burning the shit down live. And they're like, oh, it's not that bad down here. Yeah. They're just burning this shit. And like, really, it's 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 all fucked up. So, um, but, sketchy man. That's that's a that's the that's a content that I've been taking in lately, and I think it's good. I, Tycho, I always bring Tycho up. Tycho went out to Hollywood, did the LA thing with for music, and um, Tycho just recently, last time I was with him it was probably like a month and a half ago. He is moving into the Christian rap space. Like he he he's sitting on all this music where, you know, he's always he's. Um, always had the resources to be able to put money into his music, and f at the time where he wasn't pulled away because he had this obligation, if you know what I mean. Like so, um, oh, why am I going that? So, but anyway, Tycho, Tycho now. So his music is about you know, it's 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 typical typical rap shit on a super lit level. It's really really good. He's sitting on a ton of it, and he's having this internal conflict because now he is uh accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior after going out to L.A. And he told me, like, the inner workings of why. Like, he fucking saw some... Yeah, it, like, some it, crazy. Satan is alive and well yeah. in L.A. and yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. So, um... But look out for look, some Christian rap music from Tycho. I think he might drop... I, I've, I've encouraged him to drop uh, some... Like, take take an EP. If not, if nothing else, don't, don't throw any of it. Don't delete any of it. Um... Take what you're feeling now and absolutely work on new art. But, like, dude, you got to release it. You got to release the stuff that, because I've heard it. Because people will like it. Panic at the Disco sample. Panic, people will like it, though. Yeah. people just, yeah. it, some. But he's just conflicted because he, like, really wants to tap in. He thinks that he's been spreading the wrong message for all these years and his rap music and this and that. Which, um, for, for you to be, especially an artist, and be, like, that morally driven, I, I think it's, I think it's, like, um, admirable. You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've made decisions as a musician that were like that i was morally conflicted you know what i mean i'm not just gonna move like this because it's the thing that makes me most money or move like this because it's the thing that will drive the most attention like um i've had like real life conflicts where i'm like fuck like come to tears about it you know and i'm like well if i want to keep making the type of art that and, and growing as an artist i'm gonna have to make these choices you know what i mean so um i was talking to somebody and they were saying that like um as long as I offer anyone who's interested in staying around me the opportunity to grow with me and I and I and I, I make myself available to teach them anything that I've learned and be as to any help uh, offer the resources and this and that as long as I'm doing that and like okay so like now I've given people opportunity to grow with me because I've had opportunities to grow that I, this and that if you do all that and people still decide they don't have the time they don't have the energy. They got something better to do. This and that. They check all these boxes where the last, the only thing that I can come to to the conclusion is that you don't care as much as me. And if you grow apart from somebody, it does not test your loyalty in any way, shape, or form. If you've tried to help them grow as well, you know. Um, and like, I have a feeling that like there's some tough choices that are gonna have to be made in like the area of just like growing. As a, not even as an artist. I'm not even talking as an artist. As I'm person. talking like as a person. You yeah, know what I mean? It, it, any, growing up. Yeah. Any, any, dude, I'll leave fr friends that I've had, had been around for since second grade. It, like, depending on what you're on. And like, I, I've, I'm good at it. Well, I was adopted. So like 18 foster homes by five. So like people coming and going doesn't bother yep. me too yep. much but like yep. there are uh, people that I, that I fuck with super heavy I want them to come with me right. and this and that but like here's the thing from also being an addiction in the addiction space I know that to protect myself if my best friend 
um, offers me this and that. And I told I told them no, and tried to check them in, and they they say no to being checked in, and they keep bringing that around me. I have to protect myself. Yeah. So like, in that in that scenario, like I've already I've already seen it as to where like to protect myself or to grow as a human being, which is all we all want to do. It's all we should want to do. You want to continue to grow, even I don't care if I'm 99 years old, and I and my day of death is tomorrow, and I know that. I'm still gonna either then try to teach which is still me growing as well like I, I it fills my cup and the other person's cup it's mutually beneficial to teach people anything um <clears throat> i'll still be, i would still be trying to go no matter what i don't care there's no threshold even though even if the firmament is real still no threshold because yeah, you can you can transcend through the firmament yeah. the astral projection as we yes learned today, yes as we've on learned. what's popping butler hip-hop yep <laughs> and this is not, <laughs> imagine yeah, we that can end it right now. We can end it right now. <laughs> it's like we've been going for an hour and uh, yeah, hour, hour and twenty five minutes. Hour and twenty five minutes of nighttime pod. What do you think? Should we get Mister? Should, should we like revive Mister Mister uh, Hampton? Mister Hampton. Oh, he's done. He's <laughs> out. He's he's cooked. Mister Hampton got a got a uh, got something to plug, bro. Um, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. He spoke that whole L to the He's face, got bro. A big ass fucking vehicle, dude. Don't make me have the fucking God, I think, bro. <laughs> um, Yo, so I, I was I, listening to this shit the other day. Yeah, I bet it's a little warm. It is a little warm. I need to get a fan in here. It's not loud. It, it's just like the threshold for AC. We're like moving into that point where like the AC might not be important for the whole next week, but it was today. It was seventy-seven yep. degrees. Yep. But uh. Yeah, and th there goes your electric through the roof as yeah. soon as you put them in. Yeah, <laughs> Yo, I, I heard about this thing. Um, it's called frogging. August and I were, were going to talk about it earlier. And um, frogging is when someone lives inside your house and you don't even know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Fucking that like is, I was like thinking how we were talking about like the paranormal shit. So imagine if you come home every fucking day and you're just like, that's not where I left it. That's not where I left it. Yeah, dude. There. What there. the fuck? But you think yeah, you got someone living in the house, bro? There's probably people that are just like, like they think it's the most, the funniest thing in the world. That's where they do it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them will say they'll live in a house for like three weeks and then go somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. yeah. So I was listening to, um, it was the Mr. Ballin episode, Augie. Mm -hmm. So M Mr. Ballin was talking about the scariest thing he ever heard and it was about how this guy was living inside of the fucking oh, people's yeah. house and they opened the door to the closet and there's this kid standing there with a hatchet in a dress. yeah in a in a in a dress like with with a with like a ham bone or something like that right Fuck right that. so this we're talking about a navy <sighs> seal Jeez. saying that that is the scariest <sighs> fucking mr, mr. bowen's a navy seal he was a navy seal yep. yeah yeah until i, he got, I love he got i love when, in, in i love when rap. military people um have like platforms to speak and and, it, and it's not just like military stuff you know right. like let me you're you're uh well traveled you know what i mean like um a sense of discipline a moral compass mm -hmm. those, those types of things that's i'm interested in here he, was david goggins military or he just a uh, fucking do you know, know david goggins the goggins motivational right. speaker mm -hmm. august you know david goggins i've heard the name but i don't this guy run. This guy will run about, run a, a hundred miles in one clip barefoot through. Oh, that's like, like our, our buddy, our buddy that we used to be our personal trainer. And that's what he used to do. Yeah, like he, like he's uh, like sadistic in the way that he disciplines himself. Yeah, like, that's it's how these not this right, dude. Is. He and we would call his workouts. We're not like, um, were you. Where you go and see like how many times you can pick up 125 pounds or some shit. It was like occupational workout. He's like, oh, you have problems sitting in the chair and getting out of the chair. Yes, I well, do. let's see you get up out of the chair. And then you get up out of the chair and he's like, okay, now hold your hands out and do it. So you're just like building this core. It's all uh, core okay. strength. Okay, right? cool, cool, cool. But cool. still, yeah. and then after you're all beat down from that core strength, he's like, squat time. You're, and now you're, I'm like, but he, there. what we didn't realize he is doing was actually building the supporting muscles before we were actually building the muscles that we yeah. needed to yeah. do a squat. Yeah. And it was like, it, it, just understanding what he was trying to get us to do, it took it took a little bit of time and the yeah. COVID hit and all this shit. Yeah. But he actually fell, um, like from Whoa. from. 
T- Tony, you know he's there. He was my friend two seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, bro, you were just sniffing. So, so he <laughs> he fell from like anybody. basically framing a house like this this height and then falling directly into the basement onto his face. Hey, that's uh, how he fell. Yeah, he so his face up. Like twenty feet. Oh, thirty no. feet. Thirty feet. It was three. It was two stories in the basement. Oh no, bro. He got up. He got up and was just walking around. I had a, I, I did concrete. The, the guy that owned the company, but he would work with us every day, Rutledge Constructions. He fell 15 feet flat to his back, broke so much shit in his back, didn't have the laborers or finishers to finish the job. Contract was for that day, uh, probably, it wasn't 100 yards, it was probably like 30 yards of concrete in the basement, right? And, uh, Finished another six hours of working. Like, have you ever finished concrete? Fuck no. I'm okay, okay. so, so like I'm you're on a Mexican. <laughs> you're on these boards. <laughs> you got one board on each knee. You have to keep your toes from hitting the concrete because it's wet concrete behind you. So you're on these 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 boards, and the only sport you have is your two trials, right? And you go back and forth, and it's a lot of wrist work and this and that. So imagine. Uh, uh, so the. What ended up happening after that day of work, he got a, I think it was a 15 inch rod in his back with with screws going across, but like 15 feet flat to his back. No, no, nothing, dude. Uh, To finish the rest of the six hours in like concrete, everyone says, uh, it it is one of the hardest like profession on your body, you know, but that's like, dude, this, this right here is the most powerful thing we I, I got, I watched this dude. motherfucking guy. Uh, it was on TikTok. They were doing a concrete thing in the in the thing or whatever. And it was it was insane to just see what the fuck they did and how they did it. I, I don't know any of that kind of shit. Yeah. It, it, it blows my mind. So. You ever be up at like three and like your suggestions on YouTube have just been like going through and you just end up watching fucking two Indian dudes build a fucking mansion out, out of fucking of like out of yeah. mud yeah. bamboo and yeah. shit. Yeah. Right? Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> my fucking toxic traits. I think I could do that. <laughs> I figured that shit out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta yeah. have a big enough place to be able to do it. Yeah, they do, and like they don't use like like tools. They just do it with their hands. They like pack everything in the well, shit. I, I thought bucket. they were using a bamboo stick. At least well, bamboo yeah, they'll stick. use like yeah, they'll use like tools primitive. from yeah, primitive. That's actually I think in the title of like the video is like primitive building or something wait, like wait that. Wait until like so. That what's cool about okay? So I dug this. Hey pool uh, uh, out of whatever the fuck well you know that pool's only gonna stay clear for like one day yeah. until yeah. all the algae grows in there now you're like swimming yeah in this you weird need shit. all these chemicals yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you got plugs bro like you got anything going on because i got oh. plugs but i don't want to be sausage plugs oh, okay uh <laughs> right now um i'm about to start dropping music um i think i've been 30 songs i'm dropping i'm not dropping all 30 um I'm dropping an album. It's going to be called Calm Rage. Mm. Um, it's probably going to be like 16, not 16 songs. I'm probably going to trim it down to 14. Um, drop a Dirty Batch EP after that with songs that I didn't use. And then I'll know what I'm doing with the rest. Um, like all social medias is uh, Mars PGH. I'm Shamar on all DSPs. And, uh, yeah. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Shamar, Marty Moore. I'm still taller than him. Nah. I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. I didn't all, know that. Well, we don't, you don't have to stand up. Oh, I'm the shortest out of all my brothers. Crazy shit. That's fucked up. Dude. That's fucked up. I'll show you. What's crazy is whenever I met Shamar, I didn't realize like how into the, how, uh, how submersed into the hip hop culture was. I met him at Ophelos. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't even think we had ever gone to Rock Till Morning yet. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I don't know if Chris was there. But I'm there, and it was... I don't even know what the fuck show it was. But it, it might have been... It might have been the first Josh YNC yeah, show. with J Money. Yeah, with, it yeah. might have been. But me and Shamar just sat there in the motherfucking... Bro, you... you that looks like me standing next to you. <laughs> we just sat that there... Was neat. And it was like J, J for J, or I guess he's... I don't remember if he's smoking blunts, but uh, that's that's all we did was yeah. just sit there. And then and then uh, the food was fucking ready, and that, then that, he wrapped. I, I ate yeah. this Jamaican food, and yeah. and that was it. Yeah. It was it was definitely like one of those things. Like, and then I seen him everywhere after that. Yeah. Every fucking. Way we we're talking that. about you this morning. We were, we were we we're cutting up a little bit. We yeah. said that uh, anytime that we've ever seen you in the wild, 
you just walk up out from behind something <laughs> with a backpack. <laughs> with a backpack. <laughs> you just spawn, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like weird, <laughs> like a shadow person in, in sleep paralysis. You just and like, even today, I, I I looked outside and saw I could hear you guys. Yeah. I could hear you guys in in the traverse, and I was like. I went into the main part of the house and then went back outside and you guys are out, just out there. So it was like still the same thing. Yeah, dude, I never even seen you get the fuck out of the bar. Mysterious. <laughs> mysterious. I'm, mysterious, I'm man. pretty smooth for a big guy. You know? <laughs> I'm still, I'm still That's smooth. why you snuck up on Tony like that. Yeah, I did. All right. Tony was about to come get me. That was crazy. So what's up, Shamar? Is this the link? Because we, uh, we want Barbados too. Oh, yeah. You got a good relationship with Barbados? I can call Barbados right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Cool. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. I think he took offense to me saying that I, I that his music isn't my wave. You know, you can't ride every fucking wave in the ocean. I'm just like, I, I'm sorry, bro. That's just yeah. not my thing. Right, right. But I it's mean, coming from a, a guy, like, his main is, like, hip-hop. Like, bro, like my, rap. my main thing is gangster, but, gangster rap, bro. Not drill. That shit's a little too fast. Music. I want you to know and understand how bad we want to like do whatever it is yeah. <laughs> music subjective honestly yeah. um real crazy thing real used to tell me he don't like my shit all the time like all the shit on overcast real doesn't like real mm-hmm. likes like three songs off of overcast mm-hmm. and i had to realize that that's fine that's his opinion yeah. i don't like everything that ever i don't like everything that my favorite artists drop so well, i don't even like everything that i've dropped you know what i'm saying you know what I mean? so it's yeah. crazy I <laughs> think everyone's going to like everything that you drop. Right. Yeah. I right. think I think the other side of it was um so I I talked to Barbados like directly just through the um through the like, DMs or whatever whatever. Just to like not even clear clear the air but like we I just hit him up or whatever. And and I was telling him like so cuz we were talking about it too is like uh it's like Barbados like that's his job. That's that's uh what I got out of him like uh being at the shows and shit like that. He's a professional, you know what I mean? So like um and we had come to the conclusion where, like, the way that he holds himself, he don't, uh, he's not chit-chatty like me. Like, I'm, 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 I'm a different person than he is. But, um, it does open up the thing where it's like, all right, well, if you want to, if I'm a British and I say, if you want to know more about me, I'm on this podcast, this podcast, and this podcast where I'm getting interviewed. You can learn everything that I choose to, to let out. You know what I mean? See, that's the thing about Barbados. He um, open book? Once you get to know, yeah, yep. you, 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 selective. You, you, yeah, you gotta get, yeah. you gotta get close to Barbados. Once he opens up, it's a completely different yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, like the Barbados that I know is, is phenomenal. How, but long, how well, long have you known? I've known Bar, shit. I've known Barbados for about three years now. Barbados made my logo. Like, that the yeah. logo that's on my hoodies and all that shit. Yeah, Barbados yeah. made that. He made my. I album watched cover. this whole fucking. I watched this whole video where he talked about just painting, bro. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. He's. I, I watched that. Yeah, it's yeah. like one of those things. He's a real, real artistic <laughs> dude, and, and like I say, I say that to say this, where like I just like to, I, I even told him like I just like to like kick it with you. Bo- bottom line, yeah. bottom line, it'd be right. nice to just like because cool. yeah, I, 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 I like um, I like all all the art that he does. <laughs> I, I like his music. My my yeah. girl fucking she a dick rider, bro. bro it's cool as hell. <laughs> shit there, yeah. I just sat there, shot the shit with him, smoked with him a yeah. million times. He's a cool ass dude, bro. Cool, but like, this, he's, this, he's cool as fuck. He's the fuck. link, man. Is it like uh, the best the best guest podcast is when we have the venue. You know yeah, I mean? the, it's uh, yeah. the Saturday of the show. So if you, yeah. uh, I'm coming to the show. Not the um, not this. We probably yeah. won't have one on on 420 because it'll be the time that we would normally yeah. do that. Yeah, and we so don't probably just do. We don't it have on the venue Saturday. on 420 because it's at Down and Park, right? Right, 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 right. Uh, right. And we already had the venue once right. this month, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, the next show will be what May sixth, May fourth. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th is my clean day. I thought day. we weren't supposed to say that shit. God damn it. Uh, yeah, May the 4th is my clean day, and it's also me and my girl's anniversary. So that's cool. Oh, hey, you know what? Uh, well, I'm not going to fight with you about this. I'm not, not, not going to do the show. She actually, in advance already, in advance already, she said, can we just not do anything music-related uh, the weekend of the 4th? So I might have to miss that one. I'll make up for it somehow. May the fourth. Hey man, you gotta uh, do what you gotta do. I know. I know. You'll probably show up. If, if, if she asked me, yeah. Remember, remember last time I said I wasn't coming because I'm having uh, it's like Valentine's Day. <laughs> Where we go? It was like, whatever. We had to really do this, dude. It, it's so important. I will say, 
it is very very important to have balance especially when you have other people around you and, and stuff like that and like he, Ryan's got his dog but like so is ri- no, Ryan doesn't have a dog <laughs> but it is like alright so right, right now in my in my music career right I'm very very hungry I'm, I'm tasting an inkling of like a like a cool little buzz right and I, I've just put together these 13 songs that I, I feel like I feel like every single one of them could be a single the first single is doing well. I have artists around me, like-minded people, all day, every day. I'm on phone calls all day, every day, doing this and that. I'm fucking working really hard, and I completely understand why um, or how it could be a little bit of a burden, a little bit of an inconvenience, the, like less less attention over here because there's more attention over here and this and that. I get it. Yeah. I have a song about it. It's called Baby Girl Wait. You see all this motion that's coming, I promise you, we're going to be straight. I put it in six when I finish with eight. You know what I mean? It's it's on the album. I wrote a song about, like, I understand, like, the, like, I am sacrificing too. You know what I mean? Like, I luckily got to put my kids to sleep right before I left out of here. But I'm also, like, I, I love ending my night with a movie. You know what I mean? Like, it's sacrifice, but it's a necessary sacrifice because it's... It is things that I know are, are good for the things that are going on. I'm interested in it. I genuinely want to be there. So it's like making, we'll say, temporary sacrifices for a, a, a gain that will go further than that. And, like, when the gain pays off, it will be beneficial for everybody that's supported in the right way. You know what I mean? So, but I do, it, it, it is important if, you know, she, she, I, I only started saying that because uh, she asked me, to make sure I didn't do anything almost a month and a half before that date. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, with that being said, don't care what com- what comes up. It could be anything. The Migos might call me and be like, look, we need, you know we lost somebody. Like, you fit the bill. Come on, yo. The Migos did lose somebody. Yeah, they did. And they, they've been calling on me to, you know what I mean, slide in. But I did the group thing with Kyle before. I just, I don't know, man. The Migos... They're gonna be right out. Well, all right, they, me. they don't sound like they got their shit together, so maybe. Like, but there's a Diddy party that day too, bro. There's, there's a Diddy party that day. Like, there's other things that could be going on, but more, more the the weekend of the fourth. I I made a commitment, and like if the way that I honor my commitments and everything that I do musically is the same there that I will. Uh, I I do honor my commitments musically because I've made a uh, point to honor my commitments in my life. I don't even commit to something until I've checked and made sure that I can do it. Or like, whatever the outlets are that need to be tapped in with before I, all right, it's this date, meet you back in like five, 10 minutes, let me make sure everything is cool because I'm not, even. I don't care what the opportunity is, bro. If if I'm corrupting my moral moral compass, like it's not worth it. Right. So we but, but I will, if the Illuminati has a contract, for me like just fucking let me know because he's gonna be the first one to put that dress on <sighs> i will dude saying. i actually Damn. bought it already i bought it i bought the dress dude well listen me sacrifice <laughs> myself and my family gets my 40 million whenever they ritually sacrifice me with candles and blood and i got adrenal chrome my girl says i'm childish all the time <laughs> You know what I mean? So I got baby's blood. Adrenal chrome. You know what that is? Yeah, bro. I got it in me. So, like, I know they just want to tap in, and and it's that demon trying to suck something out of me, bro. Would you rather leave them with all the money that could get them to wherever, or would you rather leave them with an idea of a man with integrity that they could live up to? I think... Don't you say the Me being... I. My life is the ultimate sacrifice. But, like, here's the thing. Just because the Illuminati calls on me doesn't mean I die. You know what I mean? So like, it all, It's all about that contract, bro. Right. We've already, right. Right. We, we talked about, about this, uh, the contract being, you know, you have to make sure that you read the contract. I'm secretly sure. trying to, like, infiltrate them. That's why I'm, I, I try to, on podcast, say, yeah. like, Yo, since Illuminati, you're talking about secretly infiltrating, uh, do you hear... No, I'm trying to infiltrate. And I know that you, I know that you're, you like Alex Definitely. Jones, but uh, do you hear about them... Um, this this guy that works for the CIA was filmed on videotape three different times. So basically three different interviews with an undercover person saying that uh, basically everything that they said about Alex Jones was to frame him so that he ends up poor. Yeah? So, yeah, yeah. that's what came out on Monday. 
And he is getting sued for like a billion. That we're he, talking. He to, we're talking to the GDP yeah. of India, bro. Damn. So he, 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 that's Jesus more than they're making a year. Yeah. yeah you yeah, know, yeah. and they're like, yeah, you got to pay this shit back. But it, August and I were talking about it earlier. It's because they're 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 trying to make sure that these people don't have a voice, um, and that they lose their platform. Yeah. And, and I think that's why even like these guys that are not, they have uh, like Tim Pool and Steven Crowder. They're right now getting sued because uh, they misgen they misgendered the shooter from the uh, the Covington Catholic School. Mm -hmm. So um, misgendered they misgendered him, and I guess you know that's some kind of felony. And and that's a, what, where where what state is that a felony? Oh, pro probably in the state that it happened in. Oh, uh, like so, about San Francisco. Right. Well, something? San Francisco is just a city, but uh, I don't know where uh, Covington uh, Catholic is. I don't. I forget uh, right now. But um, a lot of what that is is to to drive a wedge between what people understand as reality and not reality. So as soon as you dead name someone or misgender someone, now you got these certain individuals barricading you in yeah. a fucking room for yeah. six hours. Is it? Is it 1984 where where uh, they're talking about like when when the the government and the reality that we live in is trying to tell us that two plus two equals five? Yep. That's yep. when and like most civilizations all throughout history, like there's a reoccurring theme that whenever gender starts to be the topic of discussion in in confusion, that is the decline of that civilization. Right. And, and yeah. when people care more about like all throughout history, when you know people what I mean? care more about athletes than. Um, than anything else really it, when they care about entertainment so like the main thing is i can go to like my work and these guys are like real into basketball football baseball yeah. and they can tell you their stats they can tell you like the stats that this guy gets on on an average tuesday and all this shit yeah. and he's like oh well he never wore that uniform he wore this yeah. and you're just like do you do you realize that there's all this other shit going on yeah. you know so that's like why we kind of do the podcast is like we understand that there's this music the music is like our escape from reality but we can't literally just escape reality because we're we're trying to build the culture we're trying to make reality a better place yeah. when there's something wrong and we hear something my favorite thing now is to tell someone well nothing's gonna get better unless you do something about it well i'm gonna just maintain my right. fucking uh, I'm, I only work, look out for my own or whatever the fuck. It's like, well, that's why, you know, it sucks around here. Yeah, so yeah, if yeah. everybody could just figure out wh what their fucking hobby is, if it's making fucking God's eyes, then fucking just do it. Yeah, you know, yeah. just whatever the fuck it is. I ironically, I've been saying that for years. Augie told me about someone that that's, when they're on house arrest, that's all they did. I, I've been saying that for years. Just fucking get out there, make some fucking God's eyes. Because August has no hobbies. She, she's like, I'm definitely not making it. Motherfucking God's eyes. <laughs> so interesting, man. Love is a hobby, I guess. Love loving someone and like taking care. Taking <laughs> I don't know. Love is a hobby. Love is a hobby, guys. No, it like can it can be. Uh, by John I don't Lennon. know. If if love it's done in a certain way, like. It's, I don't know, because, like, people get so wrapped up in, in, in loving a person that it, like, just, like, I don't want to say it becomes their identity, but, like, it can become, like, that's what they, that's what they enjoy, like, so, like, what's a hobby? It's a, it's a thing on the side that you enjoy doing outside of what, you know, in your free time, right? So. I'd say maybe caretaking is a better way to phrase yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Uh, I don't fucking know. Uh, love is a crisis. Uh, that was just for my own understanding. I was workshopping that. <laughs> I think to love someone, though, you know, loving them can't be your hobby because, like, what is there to love about them? They have to have their own hobbies, you know what I mean? To, to be something to love, or it's just infatuation. We were just talking, me and Shamar were talking about that on the way over. Yeah. Actually, that's so interesting that got brought up. Full circle, then. Full circle, that, That's full circle. Can I, uh... You want to end on that? It's like 10 yeah, yeah. Can I plug? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. yeah absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> so listen, tickets are live on Eventbrite. Um, we do have a capacity at the club that we're going for, but um, and also if Eventbrite is a little bit outside your comfort zone, tickets will be available at the door. Shout out to Chris and Noel. She's going to be at work in the door. And also you can buy tickets uh, ahead of time through my cash app. Uh, you can find me on all socials at Beamer the ET for my business Facebook and my Instagram. Uh, Beamer TCK on Snapchat. We're going to start working out Snapchat as a platform for promotion and this and that, just staying connected. Um, and then Barry Murray on Facebook. 
uh, music videos. But two music videos over the weekend, so we're back to doing music videos. And guys, no rain, no flowers. April 26th, Champagne Nostalgia, the single is coming out on the 19th. So make sure you guys stay. I'm not going to let you look away. It's you, it, it's unavoidable. Whenever I promo, I flood. So, yeah. yeah. Man, I got my hype man beside me. I got my other hype man beside me, too. So, thanks. Appreciate it. I'm close. You, you got promo? Well, well Schmart, tell me about the last show at RTM. Oh. oh, yeah. Okay. Um... Rock out, uh, April 27th at uh, Rock Till Morning Social Club, 271 Baldwin Road. It's going to be our uh, last show there. Uh, we're going to start the show, I believe, at 8 o'clock. We're going to have poetry from 8 to 10, I believe. And then from uh, 10 to the rest of the night, we're going to have uh, a jam session. Um, it's gonna have the people that signed up come out and rock out one last time. It's it one last open mic mm -hmm. it to uh, close it out. Yeah, yeah. Just can't wait. Can't yeah. wait. So that that's it, guys. Do it with style. Do it with style. Oh, Ryan, go ahead and say your fucking favorite tagline. Thank you for watching. What's popping? Flower Hip Hop Rap Community, we have these awesome guys, and you should know by now, we did it fucking live.